Well, <clears throat> um, I, I left the Congo many years ago, maybe a decade ago, going to South Africa because um, at the time um, I felt there was more stability. Um, so I went and lived there, you know, I made a life uh, for myself there. I actually started really fighting in South Africa. So it's, it's become a second home to me. Uh, but as we all know, South Africa is is South Africa. It, it's not easy, you know. People get robbed, carjacked. Uh, many bad things do happen. So one day, um, for the X time, I was driving home, and suddenly I realized there was two cars, be, uh, two cars behind behind me. So one of the car came right past me. Well, I said, okay, cool, bye. He went in front of me, and the other car was behind me. But all of a sudden, he slammed on the brake because it was a small road. I had to slam on the brake too because there wasn't any other other way to get out. As he slammed on the brake, the car stopped. The guy behind me just pushed right behind me, so I couldn't reverse, and they jumped out of the car. As they jumped out of the car, they pulled me out of the car with a gun. I started. Slapping me on my face and screaming at me and you know, they're gonna shoot me and, and at the same time He was touching my pocket searching my pocket seeing what I have in my pocket The other guy was ch checking my car they pulled things whatever wallets money Whatever they could take I put the gun. He was a very short guy I put a gun on my face. He said oh you think you're a big guy he, I didn't do anything He pulled the trigger and it's jammed I was like so I shifted backward and he recoiled as he recoiled the magazine fell off. When his magazine fell off, I just jumped on the other side and ran. So they left, they left my car there. I went back to my car and started looking, trying to realize, understand what's happened, what's happened to me. I'm just try then I started realizing this guy actually just pulled the trigger on me and it didn't go off. Oh God, he actually just recoiled and the magazine fell off. You know, that's when the most important things started falling together. I'm like, it's actually not the passport that matters right now. This guy just wanted to kill me and he just couldn't. I called one of my best friends, you know, his name is Robert. He's a very short guy. If you look at us, we have nothing in common. He's not a fighter, nothing. He's just a big talker. Uh, but uh, him and I have come a long way, you know. Uh, many years ago, when I went to South Africa, I had nobody. Him and I used to stay in the same house. Um, we stayed in the same house. We slept on the ground, on the floor. We put a blanket on the floor, he would lie here, I would lie here, and we would pull the same blanket and cover ourselves. He really is my friend, you know. Um, I don't have many friends. I, I used to think I had many friends, but I realized that it's, there is a big difference between knowing someone and being friend with someone. Uh, a terrier friend, we, we've been through a lot. He, they've arrested him before because of me. And he never came to me and said, hey, but they arrested me because of you because I had a fight with the guy that was talking trash about you. So f from that day, from that time, he was not my friend anymore. He became my brother. Uh, so yeah, I called him and we tried to figure out how to go about this. We went to the street and, f and found the guys that cleaned the street and the homeless people. You know, sometimes you think you will never need these people. Life is weird. I went to the homeless people in the street and I said to them, Hey, I just lost my passport. If you see it, please call me on this number. I will give you something. And these homeless people looking weird. Oh, really? Okay, what does it look like? Yes, my passport is blue and this is what it is. And it's the picture of myself. If you find it, please find me. I will give you some money. Then I thought about it. I'm like, okay, some money doesn't mean anything. I said to them, I realized how important the passport was. I will give you a thousand dollars if you find my passport. Then it was a different vibe. What? A thousand dollars? They went on looking for the passport, searching, 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 searching. Half an hour later, they gave me a call. Hello, are you the passport guy? I'm like, yes, please come. I said, Do you, have you seen my passport? Have you found it? No, we haven't, but please come. So I drove very quickly to go see what they had. When I got there, uh, they showed me a picture of myself. I'm like, yeah, this is me. This was in the passport holder. Like, okay, okay, cool. Just give us some time. We will call you again. I left. Two hours after they called me. 
I went. They showed me the passport holder. They said, okay, now we know the passport is somewhere here. And don't worry, we will find it. That was a very sad day of my life, really. I was very, very sad. It took me years to gather all this information. You know, when you're African, I don't know if the world realize, it's difficult to get a visa to go anywhere. You can't get a visa to go to the U.S. You can't get a visa to go to, to, to Europe. You can't get a visa to nowhere. Without even looking at your situation, checking you out, or trying to understand why you're going, are you genuine? Is it real? It's no first, then they will think about it. It's not, okay, let's look at it first. Uh, we have reason to, to refuse. No, it's, you African? This is reality of the world. You can ask any other African, they will tell you. They, no, 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 no. These people go, they never come back. Uh, it's very sad, but that's the reality. It took me years and time to build up that credibility. You know, when you have so much visas in your passport. I refuse to change nationalities for some reason because of patriotic values. Um, so that also means that you have to go to embassies asking for visas, which may take a month waiting period every time I get an opportunity. And it took me years of work to have visas from the US, visas from Russia, visas from EU, visas from everywhere in the world for me to go now to the, to the embassy and say, okay, I need a visa. They just look at my passport. So many visas. Okay, when do you want to go? They don't need to check to do a background check anymore. So losing that passport meant everything to me. It means going back to zero. And yeah, then they call me. They say, we have a very good lead. We have a very good lead. Um, if you want your passport, we will have to ask you um, 10,000 rand is, um, is about, uh, I'm not 100% about, sure about the, the currency. It was a, it was a little double the, the amount I, 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 um, I offer them. I had no, I asked them, okay, please show me that you have my passport. One of the big guys showed me the passport. And he's a criminal, he's a big criminal. He really is a criminal. And I said, you know what? I have no choice. I took the money and I paid them. They gave me my passport. It was one of the saddest days saddest day of my life and one of the happiest days of my life at the same time. Absolutely incredible. I got the passport, I went back home, and I said, the fight is on. The fight is on. 